Hey guys, my name is Lana from millennialships.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about seven reasons why self-care actually helps others. Hey guys and welcome to another video. So today's um, video topic is going to go along with a blog post that I wrote talking about why self-care is not selfish and if you put yourself first it actually is going to help the other people around you. Um, I know that sounds a little bit of a like a little bit of a contradiction but it's really true whenever you put yourself first you are going to have more to give to others. So the first reason why that actually works is because it's going to make you more giving. So number one is it's going to make you more giving. So if you are stressed out and you're not putting yourself first, you're not taking care of yourself, it's going to be a lot harder for you to help others when they need your help. So if they ask you for something, especially if you're a mom and you've got kids and they need you some, you need you to do something with them or they want to play or something like that, it's going to be a lot harder for you to do that if you're just feeling way too out of it, you're just too tired, you had too much on your plate and you haven't been taking care of yourself, it is going to feel like the biggest sacrifice to help somebody, especially if it's something that they should be doing. Um, like if your boyfriend or your husband asks you to do the dishes tonight, even though it's his duty, you are just gonna be like, no way, I'm not helping you. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. And, um, and it's gonna be a lot harder for you to just, you know, to do things that people are asking of you if you haven't taken that time to de-stress. So doing that is gonna help you be more giving to those guys when they ask for your help. Um, the other reason, number two, is that your happiness is contagious. So even just a little smile is going to make the other person smile back. So this is something that's just been proven. If you are positive, if you have happy, positive energy, this kind of positive attitude is going to transcend to the others around you. So this could be at work, this could be at home. If you have taken the time to take care of yourself, to de-stress, to, to relax, to relax your mental health, your brain, you are going to be happier. And when you're happier, the other people around you are gonna be happier too. And if they're feeling stressed or they're feeling like maybe they're dealing with something that's a little bit more difficult, it might just be that little tiny bit easier uh, when they know that you are happy, you're gonna see the positive side of it and you're gonna make them feel like maybe it's not so bad and that they can continue on as well. So your positive energy is gonna translate to them as well. Number three is that you are going to motivate others. So much like your positive energy, um, motivation is also extremely contagious and you help motivate others when you feel motivated yourself. So when you're taking care of yourself, when you're using relaxation techniques, um, when you are taking the time to de-stress, you're gonna feel more motivated to reach your goals. This could be side projects, um, a new hobby that you wanna take up, fitness goals, um, or even something like, you know, maybe like running a marathon or something like that, like a big goal that you wanna achieve you are going to be more likely to reach that goal if you're taking care of yourself, if you're taking the time to put in to the things you want to do. And when other people see that you're doing that, they are going to say like, hey, maybe I want to do that too. Maybe I want to run that marathon with you. Or maybe I want to do something that I've been putting aside. Um, so your motivation and the fact that you are reaching your goals and advancing and improving yourself is going to motivate the other people around you to start doing the same thing. So, and it's a good feeling because their motivation is going to be evergreen. It's gonna reiterate back to you and you guys can just motivate each other because everybody is taking the time to reach their goals and helping each other out. The other thing is uh, number four, you're gonna have more physical stamina. So an important aspect of self-care is to keep up your physical well-being. So this includes many things, it includes resting well, getting a good night's sleep, it includes eating healthy food, it includes um, exercising as much as you feel you need. 
Um, and all of these things are putting your body into a situation where it just has more energy. All of these things are energy inducing things. And if you're taking the time every single day to do a little tiny bit of self-care, a little tiny bit of self, uh, self-improvement on your physical well-being, then you're definitely going to have more energy and you're going to be able to pass this energy on to others. So this is a big one if you have kids, if they want to play with you or if they have some games that they want to do, they're going to want to do that and you're going to want to do that with them. You're going to say, no problem. I can't wait. Let's get started. Um, because when you're tired, when you're mentally drained, uh, you just don't want to do these things. Even the smallest thing, like a phone call, like sometimes if you're, if you've had a big day and you're really exhausted and you're not taking that time to take care of yourself, even making a phone call to like to your mom or to somebody, a friend who called you can feel like the end of the world. Like you just don't want to have a phone call. You don't want to have a conversation and it's a, it can feel like a big deal. But when you have all this physical energy that you have been collecting because you've been, you've been taking care of your body, um, stuff like that doesn't feel like a big deal anymore. And you're really going to be giving yourself to others when you don't mind having a long conversation with your mom, or you don't mind having a conversation with that friend, or even something that you don't really want to do. Like if you have to make some kind of a work phone call or something like that, it's going to feel a lot easier when you've got this energy built up. So the next one is number five is you're going to be more understanding. And this is a big one. This one's actually my favorite one because it makes the most logical sense. Um, So we've all heard of the camel, uh, the straw that breaks the camel's back. So the straw is getting put on the camel until one day just one little straw just totally breaks his back. And I see this happen to people, especially women for some reason a lot. I see this happen to a lot of people because they feel like they need to take on every single task themselves. They don't want to ask for help because it seems like maybe it's weak to ask for help or like maybe they can't, they feel themselves like, oh, I can't handle everything. But the truth is a lot of the time, if you're balancing home and work and side projects and activities, it's a lot to take on. And if you're taking on too much, just the tiniest thing is going to set you off. So especially if you have a relationship with a partner, um, something tiny like, you know, he left the socks on the floor or he's not doing the dishes tonight when he's supposed to. These little things are just going to totally set you off. You're not going to be understanding of them because you've just spent the whole day getting things thrown on your plate and one little thing is just going to totally set you off. So I like to say that, you know, if everyone else is job, everyone else's job is to put the straw onto your camel, it's your job to take the straws off of the camel so that his back never breaks. Um, This just makes the most logical sense. I know it's simplified, um, but if everyone is just constantly putting stuff on and you're not taking the effort, you're not taking that that time throughout the day to just unload a few things, then your camel is going to break his back and it's going to be a lot worse than had you just asked for help or delegated a task or procrastinated something just doesn't need to be done right now in order to do the rest of the things. So kind of to sum it up, it's like if you need help doing one thing so that you can do the 10 other things, then that's not selfish at all. That's actually really smart and it's going to help everybody else around you. Um, So that kind of leads me into my next point, number six, which is that burnout can stop you dead in your tracks. So burnout is a serious thing and it doesn't really have a warning. So when we're in the middle of something, if we're inside of it, it's kind of hard to see how much stress we're really going through. So how much we're really taking on ourselves and how much we're giving with our, with our mind and um, our anxiety or anything that you know we're giving towards these things, we sometimes just don't know how much is, it is really affecting us. And the only way we really find out how much it's affecting us is when we hit our limit and we get burnt out. So this happened to me with my actual job, like my real job. Um, I had just taken on way too much work 
I was constantly being told to do this and this and this like extra things. And I never said no to anything. I never asked for help. And I did that because I thought I would be seen as like weak or seen like maybe I can't handle the pressure um, or that, you know, maybe that I wasn't a very good or efficient worker. And the truth is it wasn't, it wouldn't have been any of that stuff if I had just asked for help and been honest about it, but I didn't even see the burnout coming. It just exploded on me one day and I was like, I don't even want to go to work. Like I can't go to work today. I was getting like high stress dreams and it was all because of the fact that I just didn't ask for help because I thought that would make me weak, but really asking for help can be one of the strongest things that you ever do. So just keep that in mind that burnout doesn't have warning signs. It just happens. And when it does, it can have a lot of negative consequences. So it's good to avoid that before it happens. And then finally, number seven is that you will be an inspiration to others. So when people see that, whoa, that woman, that lady's really got her shit together. Like she just knows what she's doing. Um, that's going to inspire everybody else around you. And it's going to make you really look really good. Like you've got everything going on and that doesn't necessarily need to be true, but it just, it looks really impressive when you can handle all this stuff and you don't even, you're not even busting a sweat over it. And the true, the true secret there is that you don't do everything by yourself. You ask for help. You delegate tasks when they need to be done. You prioritize things so that uh, you're not doing things if they don't need to be done right away. And you let go of some perfectionists in the, because everybody has a little bit of a perfectionist little thing in them and it it can be it can be tough because when you want everything done your way and everything has to be perfect then you end up spending a lot of time on one task rather than getting onto the next one and getting things done in an efficient way so when you get that figured out when you've been taking some time to have some self-care and de-stress after a long day Um, or making sure that your self-care morning routine is on par so that you get started the day on a really good foot. Once you have that stuff, people are gonna see it. They're gonna see that you're doing great and it's really gonna inspire them to learn some secrets from you and see what you're doing that's making your life so awesome. So those are my seven reasons why putting yourself first helps others. Um, If you guys are interested, I have a free 10 day self-care challenge to help you get started on this. It's just 10 days of little actionable tasks that you can do to get started on your self-care journey. So thanks again for watching another video and I'll catch you guys on the next one. (music) 